Well, hello there, everyone. It's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I am back with a brand new Altenew Build a Flower set for June 2019. This month is the Crocus, and we've got two individual flowers, each with three layers and four leaves that you can stamp out to add to your scene, as well as two layers for each of those leaves. They have coordinating dies, and as usual, I'm going to show you the inside of the pamphlet because it is just beautiful. It comes with tons of inspiration, as well as pre-printed card fronts that you could use. It's also got a lot of ink inspiration as well, and some tips on how to layer them. And always on the back, there is a layering guide so that you can pay attention closely to which layers go next and not make a mistake. This is one of the cards that I made previously, and what I did was use these die cuts to create some dimension. So some were glued to my card front, and some were actually raised up a little bit with foam tape. I'm going to be doing a very similar thing for this video, but instead of gluing some of the card, I'm sorry, some of the die cuts down, I'm going to actually be stamping some of the flowers onto my card front, and this will create really great dimension without doing too much work or needing to die cut all of these pieces out. I'm going to be using my favorite method of stamping several flowers with layers on them. And if you've seen any of my layering videos before, you'll know. But I take a letter size piece of cardstock. So this is an eight and a half by 11, cut down the center at five and a half, and it fits in my Misty. And what I'm going to do is set up my first layer at the top of the cardstock. I'll go ahead and stamp that in my lightest color. And then I'm going to rotate my cardstock and then take another set of colors. All of the colors of inks that I used are in the description if you are interested. What rotating the cardstock allows me to do is to keep everything in the right exact place so that I don't need to switch all of the layers every time I want to stamp a flower. I'm going to get four flowers out of just one placement of each layer so that I don't have to keep going in and it saves me a lot of work. So again, when I line up the second layer and go to my next darkest uh, ink color, I'm able then just to rotate the cardstock one more time and then use the next darkest color in that family. This again saves a lot of time because I don't have to go in and layer up and line up the second layer for each individual flower. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one last time with my darkest color. And this is the one that really gives the dimension and the detail in this stamp set. Sometimes it's like the second layer, but this third layer with this pop of color really does wonders for this stamp set. There is a center piece. There's actually two center pieces if you want to create a little bit more dimension and shading. Um, and I'm not sure if it's a stamen or what it is, but I'm using a yellow for that center just to make it pop up a little bit. I didn't show you how I stamped the leaves because it's very, very self-explanatory. Not a lot of knowledge needing to go into lining up the leaves and it's just uh, two layers. So not that much work for that, but I am gonna go ahead and line up the dies so that I can cut these out. These are going to be my only die cuts for my card. But as I said, I am going to be stamping a couple extra flowers, not too many, but just two of them to create a little bit of depth, like I said. I want your eye to be drawn to the fact that some of the flowers are popping up and some are sort of rested behind. So I've got a piece of 110 pound cardstock, and this is cut to four and five and a quarter, which is just slightly smaller than an A2 size card. What I'm doing right now is just sort of setting up these flowers to where I think I might like them. This does change a bit and usually does every single time I do it, but I just like to have an idea of what I want this to look like. So I decided that I wanted it to look as if that you are looking into a bed of these flowers and you can see the leaves coming up from the ground. So what I'm going to do is take one of these flowers and I'm going to make it the one of the flowers that sticks up the most. And what this is again going to do is draw your eye right to that and then you'll realize that this is going to be one of, or this flower is one of the most setback flowers, which will really allow you to take in the dimension that the die cuts give. 
So once I've done that, I did choose a yellow color just to make it stand out a little bit more. I'm again going to go ahead and set everything up the way that I'd like it. And I end up choosing this setup. I think it looks really nice together. And I do this thing when I do these beds of flowers, which I actually do quite often. What I'll do is just lift up portions of each die cut and a, place a teensy drop of glue. And I am very careful to not do too much. And that way, when I lift it off of the cardstock, it's all one piece. So I'm not gluing anything to the card front itself. I'm only gluing my die cuts together. I actually do such a small amount of glue that one of my flowers actually ends up falling off the one there all the way over on the right after I put the foam tape on actually ends up falling off because again of the smallest bit of glue, but it's not a big deal. I'm able just to adhere it to the card front itself uh, with that foam tape. So I'm just going ahead and putting some foam tape randomly around the back of this sort of die cut bouquet that I have. And what this is again going to do is raise and give some dimension to these flowers and set them apart from the flowers that are actually stamped onto the card front. Now you could absolutely do more card front stamping and also you could go in with some leaves and do some of the card front stamping with the leaves as well and give this even a fuller look. But I just wanted to do something a little bit simple to show you how I like to create these layered stamping dimensions. So now that everything is where I'd like it and adhered correctly, I'm going to go ahead and flip this around so that I can just snip off those pieces hanging off of the edge there with some scissors. And occasionally I will leave pieces hanging off, but when it's just from the bottom, it becomes a little awkward if you're just having one, just like the bottoms of the flowers hanging off. So I'm going to go ahead and snip them. Here is the finished product or the final product of this card. You can see there on that yellow flower on the bottom right especially, you get a lot of dimension in between those two and the orange flower as well. And also the, the colors look so, so nice together and I often use the color wheel to decide which colors I'm going to pair together when I'm doing like full floral bouquets because it lends itself really well to let you know which colors look best together. And here is the card that I showed you earlier. Again, the same type of idea, but this is all done with die cuts and those setback die cuts are actually glued to the card front. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. Also, all of the supplies and products used are linked in the description as well as my Instagram and website. Thanks so much for stopping by. I'll see you soon. Bye.